I want to really get your assessment of what the talent pool looks like here in New York in particular. How big an ecosystem, a bigger pool of tech jobs is it compared to the other industries? You know, overall, uh, I think New York is unique in that it has a larger share of tech jobs than we're seeing uh, for the nation as a whole, roughly double. Um, but keep in mind, tech jobs still make up a relatively small percentage of overall jobs. In New York, roughly 5% of all jobs. Svenja, AI has had a pretty dramatic impact on cities around the world, frankly, you know, from a sort of wealth creation standpoint, job creation standpoint. Caroline and I sit there and look at some of the job postings and the salaries on offer here in the Bay Area, as an example. Do you see that happening in New York as well, where there is a fight for talent and, and they're paying over the nose for it? Um, Yes and no. Um, you know, as a good economist, I'll tell you the one end on the other hand. Um, I think t taking a step back and looking at tech as a, you know, as a category as a whole, um, there we, particularly in New York, saw this extreme boom bust development happening, right? So we saw during the pandemic, a lot of tech companies hiring fiercely and demand for, for uh, tech jobs was very high. We saw that in our Indeed job postings. And uh, right around, you know, early 2022, we saw that demand really start to scale back and now tech jump uh, tech companies have right scaled we've seen a lot of action on that front a lot of headlines where tech companies uh, are going through layoffs and that particularly hits uh you know software developers uh, engineers out there and um with that we've seen actually job postings uh, particularly in the new york metro area uh really take a step back demand has really come down quite a bit and now we're we're back to um below pre-pandemic levels. We're actually 30% below uh, in terms of uh, job postings in the in the New York metro area to where we were early in, tw in 2020. So we've taken a distinct tech, uh, step back on, on tech in New York. However, and this is a big however, uh, you know, and what you're talking about in terms of Gen AI jobs, they're really booming. What we've seen there, and we've just came out with, with a bunch of research, we have a Gen AI tracker that we published, and we look at uh, jobs that uh, you know, really demand Gen AI skills. So think about machine learning engineers, data scientists that can work with these algorithms for large language models and so forth. And there you see off of a very small base, tremendous growth that you're really starting to see there's a lot of demand there and yes you're absolutely right those jobs are getting paid very well and there's a small pool of people that have these skills to be able to work with these models and they're in very high demand right now Svenja, our last guest brought the the fintech perspective and that that's a, an industry that we do associate with new york given the sort of legacy finance industry there but in which corner of the technology sector is the highest concentration of of New York or East Coast jobs? You know, we're seeing, particularly in New York, we're seeing uh, a high concentration just overall in software development and full stack engineers. Um, and we're starting to see that pick up in, uh, in, in Gen AI type, type jobs. And of course, New York has a lot of the FinTech in there uh, in as well, given that it's New York. Uh, so we, we do see that concentration uh, there. But it's worth noting that remote work has really played a role here as well, because we have seen some dilution on, on that front, right? Because now companies, particularly that are, are you know, have multiple uh, you know, basis around the country are able to uh, diversify their workforce and also hire people in other locations uh, and have them work from home and have their nearest office be relatively close mm -hmm. and dial into important things that are happening in New York. So particularly on the tech front, we see that the share of remote jobs is very high and that has that dilution effect uh, happening with that as well. Svenja, I know you have an economist hat. But I'm interested in your regulatory take, if you're read in on the idea that New York has in many ways sort of tried to lead the charge on regulating around the use of AI in hiring mm -hmm. and ensuring that there isn't bias built into the system. And that was, I think, brought in in April. How is that changing the landscape, do you think, for hiring here in New York? You know, I think it's too early to tell uh, exactly what, uh, you know, how we integrate these these new technologies, these new tools, because they're constantly evolving, how companies are using them is constantly evolving. And uh, I, I do think 
that it's incredibly important to think about uh, bias and how we use these tools. And you know, it's we often think about uh, generative AI as this own entity that it's uh, being imposed on us, and, and we don't know what to do with it. Mm. The the good news is that we have all the control here. We're able to figure out. Uh, how we want to apply it, where we want to apply it, and make sure it's uh, applied in a fair and um, equal way across uh, different industries, across different people, across different jobs. And you know, from a policy perspective, that's really important. And now is the time to start thinking about these these issues so that we can we can properly uh, you know really use these tools to their greatest advantage without causing additional issues.